All right, all you A-Push people, welcome back to Mr. Rooney's Grand A-Push Timeline, where we've already covered that each of these periods is going to start with a name, meaning something you can actually call it during your two to three sentences of contextualization that you're going to start every DBQ or long essay with. We'll give you the dates of the period, just two dates, the beginning date and the ending date, because that's what APUSH does with their periods, right? But I'm not going to just leave you hanging with dates because I'm not trying to get you to memorize a bunch of dates. I'm going to flesh it out a little bit by telling you about the beginning event. Why did I choose the year that I chose as the beginning date of the year? What was the beginning date of the period? What was happening um, for the first time? Or, or what was happening that was new from what came before that marked the beginning of a new period? Then I'll sandwich it together with the ending event and talk a little bit about where the period stops where people who maybe even at the time realized was the end of an era that we're going to call the ending of the period in this Grand A Push timeline. And then along the way, of course, we're going to talk about the bigger events that you're going to need to know that come in that time period so that you can understand the sequence. The This came after that. This came before that. Because as we've been talking about all year long, Dates aren't critical. That's why there's only going to be two dates on every screen. I'm not trying to get you to memorize each little event with its own particular year because dates aren't critical. Chronology is. Knowing the sequence of things. What came before what? What came after what? Because even in something like the short answer questions you get from time to time, like the period seven short answer questions that I'll still be entering in the grade book before I go today. Um, there are people missing points because their chronology isn't right. Um, for example, the part of the one question that asked about uh, the lead up to World War I. Well, if you're telling me about stuff that did actually happen and they are true facts, but happened during World War I, that's not the lead up to World War I or maybe happened way too early, like the 1880s, the 1890s. That is also not the lead up to World War I. So good facts may not get points if the chronology isn't right. So let's finally start with the red meat of a push. Let's start with our first period. We're going to call it the exploration period because this is when Europeans start to branch out beyond their own continent. We're going to go from the years 1424 to 1565. Why the year 1424? Well, because that's when Prince Henry the Navigator is going to commission the people and the ships and the instructions and the money and the equipment to start sailing up and down the western coast of Africa and actually charting it out. And even a little bit more critically, as they do this, they start to get more and more comfortable sailing further distances from land, which is really important to set up the rest of the exploration. The ending event in this period, that's not St. Augustine, like you might hear about in church during Lent. No, this is, as we say in America, St. Augustine. It's a place in Florida, the first permanent Span uh, Spanish settlement that's um, in the continental United States. Um, you can still go to Florida and see some of the remnants in St. Augustine. Um, basically, what we're figuring for this period is that once people stop exploring and start settling and start saying, hey, this is going to be a place where we're going to live and start to set up more people to live here, that's what's going to get us out of this period and into the pre-colonization period that'll come next time. So what are the events that you need to know from this particular period? Well, once Prince Henry the Navigator starts commissioning all these ships, for a good 60 years or so, they're exploring the western coast of Africa until finally Bartolome Diaz is going to be the guy who is going to round what we call the Cape of Good Hope in Africa. That southern tip, once he makes it around, um, people know that now the entire east is open to them and they keep exploring further up the eastern coast of Africa. A little less than five years later, you're going to have arguably the biggest event in this period. 
This is when Christopher Columbus comes across, finds islands that maybe he didn't realize right away, but the continent pretty quickly figured out was an entire new set of continents, an entire new world to explore. Um, about a half dozen years after that, you're going to have uh, Vasco de Gama, who's going to make it all the way to India by taking Diaz's route around the Cape of Good Hope and sailing further and further and further all the way until he gets to India. So quick time out for a quick point. This is one of those things that a lot of people aren't clear on. A lot of people think that Europeans made it to India directly by water first, when now we know actually a little earlier was when Columbus made it to the Americas. So pretty much this kind of concludes the part of the exploration period that we might call the maritime period. These are people who are sailors on ships. The remaining part of this period is the foot soldier kind. It's the people exploring inland. It's the people who are going to be figuring out what kind of territory they've found. It's not just about getting there and finding the new places. It's starting to explore inland and figure out what it has to offer. So what are the big events that you need to know there? The earliest one is when Juan Ponce de Leon starts to explore Florida. This is the earliest exploration of what we would call the territorial United States. Maybe 25-ish years later, two different explorers at the same time. You've got Francisco Coronado down in the southwest United States, basically like Arizona, basically like New Mexico, basically like Colorado, Utah, California, that-ish kind of area over there. Um, at the same time that Hernando de Soto is down in the southern part of the Mississippi River Valley. So we're talking going into uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, state of Mississippi area, kind of there. Again, we're just talking territorial United States. And so when you think about the broader scope of history and you go, okay, well, it's not here in the United States, but where do Cortez and the conquest of the Aztecs, where does Pizarro and the conquest of the Incas fit in? Well, okay, we're not calling this the conquest period. We're calling it the exploration period, and that is outside the territory of the modern United States, but it does help to figure out what happened when. So if you're wondering about Cortez and the conquest of the Aztecs, that happens right there. If you're wondering about Pizarro and his conquest of the Incas, that happens shortly thereafter. So again, a big chronology piece could be knowing that they came after Ponce de Leon's um, kind of traversing around Florida, but before Coronado and De Soto are going to start to get to the other parts of the United States. It's those kinds of things that can really show an AP reader you know what you're talking about when it comes to chronology. So let's call that the end of the exploration, period.